We all seem to accept certain universal facts deep down our subconscious. These facts are actually important to us. They help us to make sense out of the daily world we see. Thanks to science and them we don't have to wonder every morning seeing a big ball of fire rising and night sky lighting all up with those small twinkling stars. We all now know the universal fact of planet revolving around their stars and we just being another galaxy out of millions of them in space. One such theory, which was misconceived as a scientific fact and which formed the basis of our existence on this planet Earth, was theory of evolution by Charles Darwin. This one theory, which helped us answer the biggest question of mankind of all time: where did we all came from? And also helped us to make logical sense of our existence in this cosmos. Since 1859, this is a theory which is widely accepted and taught across all schools, colleges, institutions, shown across all science and educational channel without any doubt. This is also the theory which formed the basis of thousands of scientific studies and researches. But what if I tell you that what we have accepted as a basis of a reality, our logical understanding of this world, is wrong? and we all might want to rethink our existence as a species on this earth when i came to know about this fact i couldn't believe it and started doubting the source instead i calmed my mind and decided to go for the facts i googled watched all documentaries videos and tried to understand the scientific reason behind why and where darwin's theory of evolution went wrong i went through all possible scientific evidence which now goes against this theory I also try to understand what new evidence is suggesting us about our origin on this planet. All the scientific facts and evidence which are now telling us a new story of our origin on this planet shook me up. Though I was all curious and all excited to know about the new evidence, but somewhere I knew how these facts going to create disturbing deep inside me and force me to change my belief system and alter my way of thinking about human existence in this world. This theory was something which I trusted and believed from my early ages and never thought of even cross questioning it. It was something which were taught in our textbook and shown across all educational channels. Yes, evolution was wrong. Darwin was wrong. That the story that we've been told about our origin uh, is no longer Not supported evolution by evolution is responsible for humanity's okay, highest Darwin's achievements. Of evolution is scientifically oh, wrong. Skeptical of claims, claims for the ability of random mutations and natural selection to account for the, to account for the complexity of life. Careful examination of the evidence for Darwinian theory should be encouraged. So let's quickly jump into how and where the Darwin went wrong. and what the newly discovered scientific evidence are suggesting us about the human origin to understand the darwin theory we first need to understand what darwin theory was all about so darwinism theory of evolution states that all species of organism arise and develop through the natural selection of small inherited variations that increases the individual's ability to compete survive and reproduce Let us elaborate this definition so that we all can get the conceptual understanding of this theory. So Darwin believed that when life was here as a primitive single cell on earth that cell began to grow and became more complex over time in response to what environment or nature was showing to that cell. For example, when life form needed to adapt to different kind of environmental situations, those different kind of environmental situations would trigger a mechanism within the organism and new attribute would develop slowly gradually over a long period of time new organisms become more and more complex until it reaches a pinnacle point of where we are today modern humans darwin theory of origin actually was very interesting it was the first theory to explain us our existence logically as well as scientifically this theory was something which falls right into the framework of most of the question we humans have asked till date but not all there are few questions which this theory just couldn't answer so let's discuss the first biggest conceptual problem with darwin theory for a watch to function it need to have all the needles and machine existing at the same time and working simultaneously possibility can't be that the first needle came and then the machine 
If these both mechanisms is not existing and working at the same time, then it wouldn't be called as a watch at the first place. Just like that, for a cell to exist and function as a cell, all the life processes of nutrition intake, excretion and respiration needed to be there existing at the same time, working simultaneously side by side. It couldn't be possible that first the process of engulfing evolved and then slowly and gradually excretion followed. If the cell can engulf but not excrete, then the cell won't live at the first place. This conceptual problem also highlights the other main drawback of Darwin theory. Darwin theory told us about how trees of life were formed from a single primitive cell, but he doesn't told us about how the cell came into the being at the first place. Apart from this conceptual problem, it's also the lack of fossil evidence which are not supporting this theory. Going by the theory of Darwin, as organisms develop new attributes, they would have left fossils of those small gradual changes. For example, as great apes turned into modern humans, we should have found fossil evidence of these great apes evolving into modern humans slowly and gradually. But even after searching for around 150 plus years, scientists just couldn't find enough fossil evidence that they should have found much earlier. These fossils which scientists are being looking for are better known as missing links of human evolution in science world. You will also be very surprised to know that when Darwin put his theory together, even he had question as to why we don't see more of fossil evidence if we are result of this slow gradual improvements. He said in his book of origin, and I quote, The number of intermediate varieties which have formerly been existed on the earth be truly enormous. Here is the question, why then is not every geological formation and every stratum full of such intermediate links? Geology surely doesn't reveal any such finely graduated organic chain and this perhaps is the most obvious and gravest objection which can be urged against my theory. Even Darwin is agreeing that lack of fossil evidence of these intermediate links could be the most obvious objection that could be urged against his theory. Yet another thing which Darwin himself accepted and wrote in difficulty of theory section of his book was, and I quote, if it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modification, my theory would absolutely break down. During that time of Darwin, it was just not possible for scientists to know the existence of any complicated organ. At that time, scientists thought cell to be filled with some fluid. It was only after 150 plus years of rapid development in field of science, technology, that we came to know how complex every organ and its functioning actually are and how for a body to function well, every cell in our body should be working in a very specific way, doing a very specific job. Things become real complex when we start to look at the number of cells in our body working together simultaneously. Right now, as you are watching this video, there are 72 trillion cells inside you working in harmony, coordination without even bothering you. Can you just imagine the scale of how complex yet perfect human body actually is? Apart from this, if we are product of this natural selection, then it put human potential into some serious doubts. Because Darwin says that nature never indoors in species more than it needed to survive. But that doesn't seem true taking into account many instincts where humans have managed to surpass any human potential. We have voices going to the brink of a Milky Way galaxies, human-made rovers roaming around the surface of Mars, we have cases of humans who have surpassed this normal age of living by transcending their physical existence through meditation. We have humans who have willingly left their body and humans who have attained enlightenment. These things existing in a reach of human potential is surely what more than survival requires. Indeed, we are the species whose unique arrangement of chromosome give them the unique ability of self-feeling, compassion, love, feeling connected to one another that no other life form is capable of. We are the being of choice and not merely reacting out of stimulus. We are beings who are capable of doing things way beyond their physical as well as their mental capacity.
Before moving further, I want to be very clear on one thing that all the arguments and points we have discussed till now is trying to tell us that evolution is not the story of human beings, though it raises no question on other life form emerging out of evolution. Now, I would like to share an eye-opening evidence discovered recently which completely shattered the theory of we humans being the result of evolution. In 2017, we found the skull of a modern human in an old mine on a desolate mountain in Morocco. This fossil was not like any other fossil evidence we humans have ever found. Its uniqueness not only to do with its being looking like a modern human, but more over the era in time it belonged to. The fossil which were found in Morocco dated back to 300,000 years. 300,000 years and scientists say that given their modern looking face and teeth, these people may have blended in today's society if they simply wore a hat. Apart from this oldest fossils, we have also found other fossil evidence which shows that we humans have not changed since the time we came on Earth. Cro-Magnon, often called as anatomically modern humans, are said to appear on Earth 2 lakh years ago. And the fossil of AMD shows that they looked like us, functioned like us, and appear to have all the wiring in their nervous system that we have today, despite our technological advancements. Claim of we human being fully capable and fully function since the time of an inception became more stronger after this one discovery. In 2008, scientists found 28,000 years old fossils of Gro Magnum in such a rare state of preservation that they were able to extract DNA from it. This gives scientists a big chance in studying the difference between Gro Magnum and modern humans and how much DNA has changed over the span of 28,000 years. The results of these studies were published in a prestigious scientific journal called Nature and the results are as follows. The DNA sequence has remained static and unchanged over 28,000 years. This means that Cro-Magnum was a fully modern individual who perhaps had a larger brain capacity. This DNA discovery confirms that Cro-Magnum or AMD existing 200,000 years ago, we were them and they were us. Modern humans haven't changed since yet. With the rise of these new discoveries, the scientists are back to 150 plus year questions of where we human came from. And with that arises a century old debate of if we human are the result of evolution or creationism. I would also like to share a popular argument which is given for creationism, so you know the both sides of this story. Though no evidence have been found to support any of these arguments. Human body and its function is so complex and yet so perfect that for a human body to function properly, all the cells needed to be in a very specific way doing a very specific function. If even a small change happens in a cell, it can lead to non-functionality of human body. It's just not possible for this complex arrangement of cells be merely out of random mutation. The mathematical probabilities of these cells arranging themselves into a way it functions is nearly impossible. You see, there can be million of ways of going wrong. Seeing complexity of human body, they often claim that this human body have to be a result of a creation. And if there is a creation, then there need to be a creator to it and some intent of creating it. Coming back to the question, where did we all came from if neither evolution nor creationism confirms reason of our existence? As of now, all the evidence can only tell us that boom, we appeared on earth 200,000 years ago as a fully functional being with all the wirings of logics, creativity, analysis and understanding. Apart from this, science really don't have anything more to add to it. And it still remains the biggest unsolved mystery of humankind. But somewhere I feel that I am better off with that mystery. Because knowing that we don't know anything, it's still better than knowing something completely wrong. And I also believe that not knowing something opens up the gate of young curious minds towards the mysteries of this world yet to be solved. You see, these were the things which were never shown or taught to us in a science textbook. I remember of me having this CBSE science textbook where same old outdated concept has been taught to us as a fact for generations altogether. All the things in science were taught as a stated fact to us. Facts which creates no room for question to be raised. Discussion about just interesting viewpoints just wouldn't happen in a classroom. We were shown that as if humanity have found answer to all the question and we just have to market it up and write it up in our exam for the sake of marks. Such attitude towards education killed curiosity in young minds right at that moment. We were never told that see, here's what Darwin theory of evolution is telling us about our existence and here are some conceptual problem and drawback about his theory which science still couldn't answer. 
what do you think i feel what do you think would spark the curiosity in young minds for things in the world yet to be known and yet to be discovered now the normal thinking which comes into anyone's mind is what i have to do with it what i have to do with it whether we are result of this slow gradual improvements or we showed up on this earth as fully functional being you see it's fascinating and insightful good to know thing but it doesn't change my reality in any way i still have to go to office i still have to struggle i still have to earn a living if you are thinking on these lines then hold up for this part of video you will be amazed of how science if embraced has the power and potentials of changing one's reality for addressing this most important aspect of the video we first have to understand the implication this widely accepted deep rooted theory had on the world i want to start this by looking into the most basic thing of this theory its book title so let's go through the complete book title of darwin theory of origin of species which was never shown to us the origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life in the struggle for life this book title clears up a lot of darwin's way of thinking about the world he believed that for an individual to grow survive he needs to compete with his mates and be the best of his lot this belief of his which we all popularly known as a survival to the fittest with the acceptance of darwin theory by the masses it was also his belief towards life which was seen to be accepted as a fact by masses consciously or subconsciously every one took this as a way of life as a fact of nature's way to be effective and efficient the rather darwinian theory is based on individual who's the the most fit the fittest individual that's just basic competition now who's going to find they're going to be the fittest who's going to fight for the top competition leads to the violence to compete and then to war and all that stuff and i say the new biology is like not based on the fittest it's based on those that can fit in the best those that can adapt the best those that live in a community and harmony right from the starting we are thrown to the world of competition to be the best among all in school we compete for marks ranks in college we compete for degrees in offices we compete for salary position authority power we even compete for our love we are told as a child to secure the first position as a adult to be better than somebody's child we are told to leave our school friends because they don't fit our professional life we are told that to survive you have to struggle and struggle is the only path to happiness You see competition itself is not the main problem the main problem is with the feeling and emotion this competition provokes inside an individual with competition comes the feeling of jealousy negative emotions envy self doubt politics for it's just an extended outcome of this emotion felt at a much deeper level this rat race we all are thrown into never actually helps an individual to grow this in turns make an individual limited to the ability of a person he is competing with without even realizing his own potential and abilities without even realizing his true self with doubting the darwin theory we are doing this very powerful thing of doubting struggle being the way of life we are doubting the concept of competition and struggle to be happy in life and we're doubting the way of life we all have been told till now and embracing the new facts we are opening up the possibility of seeing the world in new light where humans are those unique species who can grow with compassion with the feeling of love with getting inspired by others you know in maths when we were not able to find an answer to a problem with a particular solution we say that the approach to the question is wrong and we keep changing it until we find the answer to the problem just like that we all have been trying to apply years old solution to the same problem again and again but the problem here is that we are not even trying to apply other solution even after failing miserably and i'm sure i don't need to tell you how miserably we are failing as humanity as a whole amazon fires wars political fights religious disputes poverty unsatisfied life and the list can go on forever 
it was actually very sad for me to know that India, the country I belong from, the country which is spiritual center for seekers around the world, is now the most depressed country in the world, followed by China and USA. These stats are interesting at the same time because they tell us a lot, as these countries are also the world's most fastest growing and strongest economy. This helps us to draw a direct correlation between growth and unhappiness and tells us that how faulty our growth models of society actually are. We live in a society that promotes a consumerist lifestyle. It's a very deliberately manufactured illusion to support a consumerist economy. We live in a culture where consumerism defines our idea of what a good life is, where it's good and natural to want more stuff. We all want to make money so that we can be happy in our life. Eventually, we all earn money but are not happy with our life. Which clearly means that we are not using the correct way of approaching happiness. The problem here is not with earning money. It's an important aspect of life. But the problem here is with we attaching ourselves and our happiness only to money. The problem is not with we trying to earn a living. The problem is with we limiting ourselves only to earn a living. The problem is not with realizing the importance of earning money, but not realizing that earning money is not the only thing in life. This all clearly shows up that the thinking we have put in place is definitely wrong. And as Einstein famously said, we can't solve a problem by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. We all, we all are in need of new system, a new solution, a new viewpoint of looking, understanding and perceiving world around us. And if by any chance you are wondering with the idea of world we are talking about, could it even exist? Then we definitely have to look at Bhutan. Bhutan is one country who doesn't have GDP but GNH, Cross National Happiness, to measure country's growth. And this approach towards life have definitely helped countries and its citizens in many ways. From free healthcare, education to being the world's only carbon neutral country. When I look into the world's problem, I think to myself that maybe it's not the problem we are unable to solve, but it's a viewpoint we are unable to change. So tomorrow morning, we all might have to go to work completing our daily course of life. But this time, not as an individual who is helpless of his surroundings, situations, one who is victim of his own system, but as an empowered individual who has the realization of unlimited human potential within, which is way beyond powerful than he thinks. As an individual who is not limited to the struggles of life, individual who has this realization that competition is not the way of life and real growth lies in love, compassion and harmony. What would the world look like with a group of young people educated to understand that nature is based in cooperation and not competition, that nature is their friend, and that they are part of rather than separate from the world, and empowered to self-regulate their own bodies? I mean, what a very, very different world we would have.